Hi friends, last week I got a couple of messages from subscribers that were saying that they were having a really hard time with their foundation looking cakey, mottled, kind of breaking apart, and also clinging to dry spots, and all of this due because of menopause. So last week I did a video that was addressing our skincare, all of the things that we can do and combat menopause, age spots, wrinkles, and especially dryness and how we can get our skin plumped up and looking absolutely fantastic and i'll make sure i link that video down below because if you haven't seen that that one is the precursor to this one because you want to give your skin all the nourishment you can possibly give it before you even start in on on foundation at all prep 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 do your prep do a ton of moisture get a ton of moisture on your face let your face sink in all of that moisture for the day. That's what's going to make your foundation look good throughout the day. And especially if you have dryness like I do. Now, texture is a whole different issue because you're wanting to put on so much moisture if you're dry, then you can look textured with your foundation. First thing you wanna try, there's two things you can try before you ever start your foundation that are going to make a huge difference. Take a tissue, and I have a two-ply tissue here. I'm going to separate the tissue and I'm going to go over my face and I'm going to soak up any of the excess oils that I have from doing my skincare. Now, if that doesn't work with putting on your makeup, so you're going to try this one day. You're going to do it one day to lift off all the excess oils. See how that does with your foundation routine. If it doesn't work, the next thing to try to keep you from getting texture on your face or for, to keep your foundation from breaking apart because you have so many layers on your face of skincare. Now we're gonna put more layers on our face with foundation and concealer and primer. What do we try next? We try to see if our skincare is gonna ball up. How do I try that? Simply take your fingers and rub them across your skincare. Sometimes you'll see this right away. Sometimes it will happen after your skincare has sunk in a little bit. You run your fingers across your skin like this and you get little balls up immediately. Your foundation's going to ball up almost every time. So I want you to be cognizant of that, but you've let your SPF sink in for that amount of time. So it's already done, done its job. Whatever's left on the top is just excess. So what I do is I take a towel. This is just one of my microfiber towels and I will go and I will wipe off everything. I'm still gonna have all the moisture. I'm still gonna have everything on my skin, all of the ingredients on my skin that I needed and I'm still gonna have SPF protection because it's already sunk into my skin and set into my skin, but I'm taking off the excess layer of products that might be causing me to get a bunch of texture. Okay, now we have to tackle large pores. That can also make our skin look very textured and mottled. If you've been with me any amount of time, you know that I love the Revlon Prime Plus. This is perfecting and smoothing. So I like a little bit of dimethicone to fill in my pores. You have to use very light layers. Usually when you get mottled skin or you get mottled makeup where it's breaking apart, looking kind of textured, it's because you've used too much product. So look, this isn't even a pea size amount of primer. A lot of people go in with way too much primer to begin with. I want you to strategically target like on your nose and right here on your cheeks and then on your chin where you would normally get a lot of texture or a lot of large pores looking through. I want you to strategically target that working your way out towards the edge of your cheeks. Now a little bit again is going to spread over your already moisturized face. I'm going to use that about that same amount one more time. I'm going to put that on my forehead where I have the pores and I'm just going to direct it outwards and then I'm going to put it on my chin where I get the worst. Remember, don't glide it across because that's gonna probably create more texture. Pushing it in is what does the magic as far as taking away our pores and that orange peel look that we might get. Once you've done that, I want you to go in with your favorite concealer. Mine happens to be the Tower 28. This is what I have been talking about on my channel ever since it came out, it's so good. And I want you to put one dot in here in the trough and then I want you to put another dot out here on the edge. Now what I want you to do is take your finger, clean finger, and just spread it so that it's spread across there 
not working it in, just spreading it a bit. I'm letting that rest. The next thing I want to do is I want to target wherever I have extra redness, extra dark spots. I want to target that with this concealer. So I'm going to put a little bit right there on my cheeks. If you can see, I have some dark spots over here. I also have some extreme redness right here. Notice I'm not going down in to get more concealer. I'm just working with what's on the doe foot applicator first. So I want you to think about the redness that you have, wherever you have any discoloration, any dark spots. And then I don't want you to ever drag your brush across or your sponge, whichever you choose. A sponge is gonna lift up the concealer. I suggest that you use either your finger or a brush on your concealer part. On your foundation part, it's not as important, but on this part, it kind of is. So we are spot concealing first. Why is that important? Because when you put on your foundation, you want your foundation to only be a very, very thin layer. Yes, we want to use foundation. It's what evens everything out, but we also can go overboard with it so that our makeup looks too cakey. Okay, while we've been spot concealing, our concealer has set down. Now I want you to pat that in with a brush or your finger. You can do your finger as well. Bring it down. I want this concealer to be spread out. I want it to be buffed in. I want it to look airbrushed. I want you to go along the edges. I want those edges softened. But what happened while we were letting it set on our face is it became a maximum coverage concealer even though I was using the Tower 28 and it's fairly thin. And now you have so much coverage without it ever looking cakey under your eyes. I make sure I go into the inner eye right there where I get super mounted darkness. And then I am airbrushing or feathering out these edges by just stippling. So I'm using the Huda Beauty Easy Blur and I will show you how much I'm going to use. Now I use this much on my neck and then I will, sorry, I will use this much on my face as well. Can you see how much I have in the palm of my hand? It's hardly anything. All right, I'm taking a BK Beauty round, the round foundation brush. I'll put up on the screen what the number of it is because I'm blind as a bat and can't see. I'm taking that and I'm going to spray it with Max Fix Plus. You can use any primer spray you want to. I'm gonna put two sprays right in the middle of that brush. And then I'm gonna take that brush and I'm going to swirl it in my hand to pick up all of the foundation that's on there. And then I'm gonna to continue to swirl. What happens with this is it drives the foundation down in there into the brush. And you'll be surprised how much this covers. We're gonna start with my chest. And I'm just going to stipple and push this all around to get the coverage. If you haven't tried this foundation, it really is a good foundation for blurring everything out. The foundation itself needs to be a good foundation before you start the routine. Otherwise, you're really not gonna have a good outcome if you have a foundation that breaks apart or is too oily, that kind of thing, you're gonna end up with makeup that you're not gonna like. If you are using a sponge, spray your sponge. Make sure it's wrung out very, very well in a towel. You wanna make sure of that. You can do it with a tissue, you can do it with a paper towel, whatever you want. And then you just go in and you spray that. One more time, this one is for the face. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount. The tiniest amount of foundation you can get. Here's the spray. I'm gonna do just one spray because we already had one spray, two sprays in there before. And again, I'm going to work that into my hand. And then I'm gonna start in the middle of my face. So I'm just going to be stippling and pushing right in the middle of my face, I go all the way down. The reason is, is because this is where people see you straight on normally. It's where you see yourself in the mirror. This is how it's going to look the very best it can is when you're working from the middle and then we're pushing it out. And again, see how I'm stippling and I am just pushing everything out. That's all you need to do. You already have your coverage on with your concealer. So now all we're doing is trying to even everything out with that little bit of foundation. And you see how even this looks. Now, you can still see my blemishes. You can still see my skin through here, but it is all evened out. It's all completely covered, yes, but it doesn't have to be covered to the point where it looks like a mask. Next, you're ready to set it and forget it. Magic does happen with powders, believe it or not. So I'm gonna use this Kosas Cloud Set Powder. This is the pink version. This is such a good powder, I really like it. And I'm going to use the small side of this Hourglass 
hourglass brush. You can use a powder puff if you want to. You can even use that dampen sponge if you want to. I'll show you how to do that sponge in just a second. So go in with that powder, but don't go immediately in. Again, pat it into your hand. This is a mature woman's best tool is the palm of her hand because when you pat that powder into your hand it's also picking up some of the powder onto the hand so now i'm going to just strategically again hit these parts and this is probably good for a very oily gal too i'm not brushing no brushing i'm hitting these parts that can become so textured and modeled looking and then i'm going to go up towards my eye we're not doing the eye first that would deposit too much powder and then i'm going to go across the eye and this is just one side that you want to do. I am going to do in between my eyes because that's where the big pores are. I'm gonna do the nose. I'm gonna do right there in the corner of the nose and right there across the chin. If you'd rather use a puff or a sponge, you can do that. All you're gonna do is go in, pick up some, again, put it into your palm of your hand and then go across where you want it to be. What that does when you use a sponge like this, it actually deposits just a little bit of dampness on there with the powder. So it's gonna melt the powder together with your makeup as well. Lastly is your setting spray step. Setting spray is going to help all of your layers melt together. And normally I would have the rest of my makeup on, but I'm doing another tutorial right after this, so I don't have it on. But what you're going to do is you're going to spray it everywhere. You can be generous or you can do light. And Charlotte Tilbury has these little polymers in it that will help fill in pores and help with texture as well. Also, it has ingredients in it that are not going to dry you out. Please look at your ingredient deck on your setting spray. If you are a menopausal woman, you do not want any alcohol. That is the end of it. I'm not going any further, but look how nice this makeup looks on my skin. The other thing is because we set it with powder and because we set it with setting spray, it's gonna last all day. I hope you did enjoy today's video and I hope that you got some great tips out of here for mature skin. I still have my skin showing through. It still looks like skin but it looks perfected. This is how you get flawless skin at age 55. It's not gonna be 20 year old skin, that's okay. It is incredibly beautiful still. Our wrinkles, we've earned every single one of them. So just be proud of them. Be proud of how beautiful your skin can look. And I hope that you did enjoy the tutorial. Give it a thumbs up on your way out of here. Love you guys so much. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you in my next video. Bye friends.